The last thing we're going to talk about is vocabulary building. This, I think, is a problem that most students have. They always ask you, how do I improve my vocabulary? Okay, grammar, I can do grammar exercises. I can, you know, work through these videos, these worksheets, etc. I can learn grammar rules. But how do we systematically build vocabulary? Well, there's no one way to systematically build vocabulary. There are different techniques or different tricks you can use. And what I'm going to show you here are things that I use. You know, I've, I've learned quite a few foreign languages. And these are techniques or tricks or things that I've done in the past. Um, that have helped me build my vocabulary. Another thing you need to remember is learning does not always take place systematically. There are many different factors involved. And when you're talking about building your vocabulary, the realistic amount, maximum, and this is the maximum, is definitely 20 words per week. I mean, people think that I want to learn 100 words or maybe 20 words a day. Realistically speaking, the maximum amount of vocabulary you're going to learn a week is most likely 20 words. And the technique that's most often used is reading. Right? So you guys read books, you read newspaper articles, you read uh, journals, you read things for your courses, etc. Sometimes you read for content, sometimes you read for pleasure. Right? But reading is a very important uh, or the most often technique that's used. Now, when you read, there's a difference between a passive and active vocabulary. And passive vocabulary is when you're reading, let's say, a text and you come across different, you know, come across words, you can recognize what they mean or you know what they mean. You have a passive understanding, but if you're asked in a situation, in a, you know, in a writing situation or in a speaking situation, to produce that vocabulary, to make it active, not just understanding the vocabulary, but actually using that vocabulary, that's sometimes where the wheels fall off the bus. So the goal in vocabulary building is to take your passive knowledge or in some cases your non-knowledge, you know, you don't have the knowledge of the vocab words yet, and make it active. So how are we going to do that? So we, there's two types of vocabulary that we can talk about. The first type of vocabulary is something called the academic word list. And we're going to be working with the academic word list in the verbs, uh, in the uh, uh, first and in the second uh, verb presentations. Uh, and the academic word list is a list of words or word families most often encountered in academic writing. So it's obviously not confined to one subject area, but it cuts across different subject areas. And if you have a good grasp of these words, they're used in almost every piece of written work. So when you write your essays, these are words that you're most likely going to be using to write your essays or to translate. Uh, you know, some of you people who are taking, you know, some of the University of Kassel students who are taking translation exams, um, you're going to be translating these words. So you need to have a good grasp of these words. And we talked a little bit about, you know, what it means to learn a word. And it will, uh, you know, go a little more in depth when we do the, uh, the, the verb presentations and the noun presentations. We work on those problem areas. And if you're interested in learning a little bit more about the academic word list, how it was put together, et cetera, I mean, there's obviously different academic word lists. The one that I'm using here for this presentation and for this course is an academic word list put together by uh, uh, Avril Coxhead at the University of uh, Victoria in uh, New Zealand. Uh, so you can click on that and uh, you know, see what, uh, what Avril Cox had has to say about the word list, how it's put together, what kind of criteria were used, etc. You can even get a good overview of the different words and word families in the word list. Second type of word, the second type of vocab is subject area vocab. Now, when you write your essays or when you translate, you don't just need sort of these general words that are used in academic contexts, but you need a specific subject area. So, for example, let's say if you're writing about a, you know, you get a newspaper article or you get a text and you have to write something about the environment. Well, you need to have a little bit of environment vocabulary. You need to know something about environment vocab. Or if you get a, 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 a newspaper article, let's say, on, um, you know, on the educational system, you need that kind of vocabulary. So in order to systematically, or in order to help you systematically build your vocabulary, we're going to be taking a look at newspaper articles of roughly 300 words. So each week, so each unit, I will post, in addition to the presentation and the worksheets uh, and the interactive exercises that are uh, you know, that accompany the presentation, I will post four newspaper articles each week of roughly 300 words, maybe 300 to 400 words maximum. 
and we have something called intensive reading versus extensive reading. So for intensive reading, you focus on and exploit one text. So take one of those four articles and do the following techniques that we're going to talk about or that I'm going to show you. Extensive reading is reading for more info, recognition of vocab, etc. So if I were you, this is what I would do. One article a week should be read intensively, and the other three articles, which are thematically related to that one article that you read intensively, should be read extensively. So you just read it for background, uh, recognition of the vocab that you worked on intensively, but really focusing on and exploiting one text. So let's take a look. This is the text that I'd like to take a look at first. It's uh, an article on homeschooling pros and cons. I mean, obviously, this is too, uh, uh, you really can't read this. It's, um, the print is too small, uh, but I have it here on the, uh, on the presentation or accompanying the presentation. So what are some of the techniques that you can use to exploit, the, uh, exploit this text and learn uh, the vocab in the text? Well. Let's say you've read through the text and you've looked up all of the different vocab that you don't know and you've you know, written that down. So now what do you do next? Are you finished? No, not by a long shot. First thing you can do is you can reconstruct the article. So write out the key words and phrases. So the key word and phrase test is in reconstructing this article, you would, need these key, you would need these words and phrases. If you don't have these words and phrases, you will not be sufficiently able to reconstruct the article to explain what the article about is to someone. And then reconstruct the article, rewriting and summarizing it in your own words. So let's take a look over here. So taking that article, I wrote out, these are the different key words and phrases. So the article is about homeschooling, the pros and cons of homeschooling. It's a very controversial, a very hot topic in the United States right now. So these are the key words and phrases. If I was supposed to explain what this article was about, I didn't give the, you know, a good overview of the arguments, both for and against homeschooling, which is what the article is about, these are these kinds of words that I would need in order to do that may seem like a lot, but it's a very, this article is a very complex or complicated article. So essentially write them out and use these to reconstruct the article in your own words. Second technique you can use is called vocab maps. So first thing you can do is for the vocab words that occur most often in the text, write out the various combinations. So take a look over here. Obviously in an article about homeschooling, the word homeschool occurs very often. So these are all of the combinations that occur in that article with homeschooling. More and more parents are homeschooling nowadays, decide to homeschool, pros and cons of homeschooling, homeschooled students, homeschooled kids, etc. So these are all the combinations that occur with this article, uh, that, that, that occur with the word homeschooling in the article. Right? And there's always about four or five words that occur more often or that occur more than once in the, uh, in the article. Next technique you can use is a five plus one collocation box. So take a look over here. So let's say, you know, the word method occurs in the article more than once. So you write out the word method and you take a look at a collocations dictionary. And there's quite a few collocations dictionaries online. This one over here, which is included in your bibliography. So let's see collocation. Collocations dictionary. You can give this over here. So you type in the word method and you would come up with different kinds of collocations. So you have adjective, noun combos, effective method, efficient method, good method, conventional, principle, traditional. These are all adjectives that occur with this noun method. These are all collocations. You have verb plus method, method plus verb, right? method plus preposition, so these are all collocations. So I would do what's called the five plus one collocation box. And the five plus one, oh, five plus one collocation box essentially is, oh, let's take a look over here, oh, oh, let's go back. 
right? One word and then five collocations, so of the same kind or the same type. So you have education here, and you have all of the verbs that occur with education. Have education, receive education, provide somebody with an education, continue your education, complete your education. And then what you can do is rewrite or summarize the article using these combinations. So obviously you don't need to do this for every single word. So maybe for uh, your vocab map, right, the words that occur most often in the text or more than once in the text would probably be maybe a handful of words. And the same thing for the collocations. And it's gen generally roughly about a handful. Close over here. It's roughly a handful, sorry. It's roughly a handful of words we're talking about. So maybe five or six, maybe seven words. And rewrite the article using you can use both of these maps or you can use either of these maps. Another technique is free writing. So take the vocab maps and the keywords and phrases list that you constructed and you can do 10 to 20 minutes of writing whatever comes to mind about homeschooling. So sit down, take out a paper and just write 20, 10 to 20 minutes, you know, using this, just 10 to 20 minutes of whatever comes to mind about homeschooling using these vocab maps and keywords and phrases maps. Another thing you can do is you can frame an essay question. So for example, take a prompt. If I were a parent, I would, I would not homeschool my children because, and then just write for 10 to 20 minutes. Once again, free writing. You don't need to worry about things like paragraphing, thesis statements, just free write using these vocab words. It's a very powerful, a very important technique. Another technique is a fairy tale or a cartoon creator technique. I use this actually a lot because it's a kind of a fun activity. So take a well-known fairy tale and adapt the characters or the storyline to the topic of homeschooling. So for example, you can take the, the character, it would be a good fairy tale, maybe the character of uh, Little Red Riding Hood. Right, so Little Red Riding Hood uh, is being homeschooled by her mother and is being sent over to her grandmother's house to talk about homeschooling to her grandmother and then she gets there and the big bad wolf says oh I love to eat little kids who have been homeschooled tell me a little bit about homeschooling and it's a bit of a nonsensical kind of activity but it's fun it's humorous it you know gives you a little bit of a dialogue sort of a dialogic aspect to it I this is an activity that I really like as well another thing is use an online cartoon creator to create a comic strip or series of comic strips on the topic of homeschooling. So for example, we have um, this cartoon creator is listed in your bibliography. <coughs> but you can take a look over here, an online cartoon creator. So you can do Toon Do, so let's say, oh, wait a minute, this is probably not the best one. It's actually a good, yeah, comic creator. This is a good one. <laughs> right? So take a look down here. So what is the name of my cartoon? I can do something like homeschooling. Add a subtitle below. Adventures in homeschooling by adventures, um, maybe sort of, let's say, that doesn't, that doesn't work. It's uh, maybe adventures in homeschooling. Who is the author of the author? So let's say Mr. Forlini. So I can do maybe a six panel. So I can do add people by clicking here. So I can put a little baby here. I can put a little prop, maybe a little baby and a book. And I can put a little balloon. So maybe we can do something like, like this, you know. So the thing could be sort of, let's say, Jimmy. Mommy says you are going to be homeschooled 
And Jimmy, is that a guy or a girl? I, I assume that's a... Well, maybe, okay. Jane. Maybe <laughs> we'll do Jane. Um, right, let's do a little a balloon over here. Yes. Mommy wants to use a different method of education. So this is a way for you to create little cartoons using this kind of uh, homeschooling vocabulary. And it's a kind of a fun activity. It's a bit it's a bit corny, right? Just like the fairy tales activity, it's a bit corny, but it's actually very effective, surprisingly effective. So in both cases, once again, use vocab from maps and list. And if possible, you can record yourself narrating the story or the comics, and maybe you can write it as a little bit of a dialogue. I like to do that, you know, record myself using a little tape recorder. Most of you guys have smartphones or, you know, I mean, laptop computers, for example, the, the, the Mac that I'm using right now also has a microphone that I can record things on. Another technique is the word formation technique. This is a very easy or a quick way to improve your vocabulary or expand your vocabulary. So you take the nouns, let's say, from the maps in the list, and you form the corresponding verbs, adjectives, and adverbs if possible, and do the same for the verbs, adjectives, and adverbs. So use this word formation exercises. And these word formation exercises, they don't just improve your vocabulary or possibly expand your vocabulary, but as we'll see later on when we do sentence conversions, it's also a very important technique to avoid different kinds of problems. And so we'll hold on on that, uh, hold off on that activity for a little while. Another thing you can do, is it possible to negate the word with a prefix or a suffix? Right, if the word is already negative, give the positive form. And what you can do is you can rewrite the sentences using the different forms of the word. So for example, let's say if a sentence has a, has a verb in it, you maybe make a noun out of the verb, and then maybe you can rewrite the sentence using the noun structure instead of the verb structure. Or maybe you can take the noun and maybe make it a negative noun, and then you can maybe rewrite the sentence once again using a negated negative noun or something similar to that. Um, and that's a way for you to improve your vocabulary and to um, you know, just, just take a little look at sentence structure, etc. Any questions? And like I said, these are all things that are, I mean, there's no, you know, one technique or one exercise is better than the others. Um, this is something that, you know, these are five, five exercises that I myself use very often when I, when it's, uh, when, when I have to expand my, when I want to systematically learn or expand my vocabulary. Thank you.